All right, it's time to enjoy example number two, where we're performing a hypothesis test involving a mean. Once again, this would correspond to assignment 2526. So, it has been estimated that the national, that's, that sounds like population language to me, the national Medicare cost is normally distributed with an average, all right, that's mean, right? National average, mean, mu, all right, I left my star up from before. Let me get rid of that. Um, so it says that the national average is $11,205. So mu equals $11,205. That's a claim. That's a hypothesis. And again, the symbol would be mu because it's the mean of a population. All right, so that would be considered the established estimated national average. I want to remind you that population parameters, such as the mean of a population, national average here, that's an estimate. That's an assumption. It's a hypothesis. Okay? And we're going to put that hypothesis up to a test here. So, that's our equal to null hypothesis. The national average equals a certain number. Alternative, less than, greater than, not equal. So we read the question here, and again, this requires some reading comprehension and some critical thinking. And I have to admit that I'm familiar with the question. Try to read it ahead of time so you can kind of think about what these things are going to be. Or try to work it before I do, you know? All right. Right here, it says, can it be concluded that the Medicare cost in Miami is above the national average? Above the national average, greater than. So what we're doing is we're taking Miami and saying, basically, is healthcare cost, is our healthcare costs in Miami above the national average? Is it more expensive? So I'm writing here, Miami, above national average. That's what the alternative is saying. All right, so basically here's the assumed average for the entire country, and we're checking to see if it's more expensive in Miami, above national average. Lots of ways you can say it. All right, now as far as identifying the appropriate test statistic, bouncing around all over the place again. Well, here we go again. We need to read the question to see whether the standard deviation is for the entire national average, or just from, for the entire nation, or is it just from a small sample of patients. So focus on the words standard deviation just like we did on the assignment where we estimated a mean. Well, right here, standard deviation. Here's the two words. I would just tell you find the sentence that has those two words and backtrack to the beginning of that sentence and start reading. Suppose in a sample of 23 patients, a sample of 23 patients, it goes on to say the mean is this and the standard deviation is this. That standard deviation, this is just, I don't know, this sounds naughty, I'm sorry, but that standard deviation I assume is for those 23 patients, that sample. So I would say in this case, it is for a sample. And so therefore, the standard deviation was for a sample. Sample, all right. Then we read the question to see if it tells us whether or not it's normally distributed. And I'm pretty certain here, okay, start reading it here, and if, when you see the words normally distributed, if you see the words normally distributed, yell, and I'll run up and point to them, okay? All right, start reading, ready? It has been estimated that the national Medicare cost per patient discharge is normally distributed, oh my gosh! There they are, normally distributed. Yep, they're right there, aren't they? Did they tell us that it's normally distributed? Yeah, yep, pretty sure they did. So here we go again, so we're gonna use T this time. All right, so T equals, and, and this is a pretty vital step here because, you know, if you put the numbers into the wrong test statistic, you're gonna have trouble. In fact, the bigger issue See, the implication of this is that since this is T, that's going to impact the table we use. 
to set up our rejection region. So basically, again, you have this entire uh, flow chart in front of you. Let's address something here very quickly. See, a thing that a lot of people get hooked up, held up on with this would be the fact that they only sampled 23 patients. And a lot of people will tell me, but wait a minute there, Mr. Septic Tank. Um, 23 patients, that's less than 30. Yeah, I know. I know it is. But you know what? We never got to that question because it was normally distributed. So we never had to worry about the sample size because of the two words in that first sentence that said normally distributed. We never asked about this. See? So you don't just jump here to the middle of the flow chart. You ask this question, and if it's yes, then boom, there you are. Don't, don't even worry about how big the sample was. All right? So anyway, what do we have here? They want us to use a, let's identify a couple of things here. They want us to use a 2.5% level of significance. And we also just realized that we're using the T table. All right, with an alpha of two and a half percent. All right, now the same logic as before, the alpha is basically the percentage of the, of the distribution that we're given to the alternative. And as we've mentioned before, on assignment 24, as well as this one, if your alternative is greater than, you're doing indeed an, an upper tail again. So that two and a half percent, we're going that upper tail there, 0.025. Boom, boom, boom. Now, hopefully you recall, though, that the T-table is actually easier to read. Most people will tell you. I mean, it's a, it's a symmetrical distribution with zero in the middle. These are T-scores across the bottom. But the two things you need to read a T-table would be your tail area, basically, and degrees of freedom. And, it, and just like it was on the assignment where we did estimation, degrees of freedom is sample size minus one. So uh, space is at a premium here. Uh, I'll just put it up here. Degrees of freedom would equal 23 minus 1. I want to remind you that they sampled 22 patients. So we've got two things here. 2.5% upper tail and 22 degrees of freedom. So we go to the T-table, which we learned how to use on a previous assignment when we did estimation of a mean. And, all right, now, this is a one-tail test. I know this is hard to tell here, but earlier we did confidence intervals. That was that first row up there, confidence intervals. But we're doing tests now. I want you to look here, if you would, with me at one tail. We're doing one tail. And that one tail is 0.025. So it looks like we're in this column right here. I know it's hard. I wish we were in the same room together. You have one of these in front of you. I sent you one, but we're doing one tail, two and a half percent, and 22 degrees of freedom over here in this degrees of freedom column. And the intersection of those, and I hope you see this before I even get to it, and I'm, I always get vertigo standing here this close. One tail, two and a half percent, 22 degrees, 2.074 would be this number right here, and that's a value of T again. All right, so formulating our rejection rule, decision rule, we're going to reject the null hypothesis if, be careful with labels, T, see T is the statistic we're going to crunch out this time, not Z, and if that T value falls out there in that rejection region, which means it would have to be greater than that 2.074. So once again, if your alternative is greater, which puts this on the greater side, which puts this on the greater, that all hooks together, hopefully. All right, now we compute. We go stick the numbers into this test statistic. Let's see, X bar would be the mean of your sample. That would be the sentence where they talk about the sample of 23 patients and the fact that the average, the mean for those 23 patients was 16,351. See, that's the mean of a sample. That's the mean for 23 patients. Mu would be the mean for the entire country that we're assuming, 11,205. 
S is, I want you to remember, the standard deviation of a sample, and that would be that 2,473. And then N would be the fact that they sampled 23 patients. Sample size. So, okay, you can grab your calculator, you can crunch away, you can cheat and look at the next slide. This is all just order of operations, basically. And again, usually when we're in the room together, I give you time to do this, but I don't know, I don't see the point. You hit pause, do whatever you want. You can look ahead, however you want to do this. It's on the next slide if you want to peek. It should come out to be 9.980, something like that. All right, now, honestly, it doesn't matter how many digits you keep. The main point is, how does this number compare to the 2.074? So hopefully everybody would say, you had me at nine. I knew what was going on, you know? So as far as how, to, how far to take that out, that's, that's a, a very arbitrary thing. Two ways, again, we could look at it. Is that number greater than 2.074? Yes, it is. It's greater than this. And you said you'd reject the null hypothesis if you got a number bigger than 2074. You did. You're going to reject the null hypothesis, aren't you? So this, if you look at the words here, if you're into the words, you hopefully this number would lead you to say, I'm going to reject that null hypothesis. Visually, that 9.980 is out there in that rejection region which would also indicate reject the null hypothesis. So, either way, we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so if we reject the null hypothesis, re if you reject this, doesn't this support the alternative? So in this example, the alternative hypothesis is what basically won the court case. And now it's a matter of answering the question. And so, I again would suggest you go back and read the question and see the point of view. And it says, and the question's going to be at the end, I'll just tell you that much. At the 2.5% level of significance, can it be concluded that Medicare in Miami is above the national average? Miami above national average. Yes, that can be concluded. So, notice the wording of the answer you see on the next slide is very close to the wording of the question we just read. At the 2.5% level of significance, it can be concluded that the average Medicare cost per patient in Miami is above the national average. This is where I don't have to pause and wait for you to write that down. Usually I don't give that slide when we're working them together, but given the circumstances, in the interest of time, and again, look at the printout that was sent to you the slide that has the answers for example two, and, and uh, keep in mind on your homework that this would be part E of your question, the computation, and decision interpret would be part F, as you'll see on the homework that was sent to you. All right, so that's all I can think of on that. Uh, Grandpa has a fun story to share with you if you want to keep watching, and if you don't, we're done working the question. So we just rejected the null hypothesis, and I've got a story about this that I think is kind of fun. I've got to get it so you can see the video, and I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it well, but anyway, we just rejected the null hypothesis, didn't we? Plus their guard play is so much stronger. They can basically go nine people deep yeah. and not lose anything. You know? no. and the other, yeah, the other guys are like, Starting maybe six man? Right. Yeah, maybe six man. Right. right. Rejected! Don't you bring that weak tot action! You go strong to your mouth and you don't go at all! <laughs> Coney and Tots. Grab an extra long chili cheese Coney and Tots for the game. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Now it's for real at totrejection.com. <laughs> Rejected! Okay, so Sonic. Tot rejection. That's a pretty old commercial. So many years ago, there was a young lady in my class. Her name was Megan Margaret McCrary. She sat right over there, I remember, as a matter of fact. And Megan Margaret McCrary, all right. And by the way, anybody that's got initials like that, she was really special. I'm S squared, Steve Sodegren. Megan Margaret McCrary was M cubed. Awesome, right? All three initials the same. So anyway, Megan Margaret McCrary was in the class. This commercial was out at the time. 
I played it like I just did. And so anyway, saw Megan later, you know, later in the semester, I think it was, and, and uh, she was just kind of laughing. And I said, what's, what's so funny, Megan? M cubed, I called her. And M cubed said, well, I, I went on a date with this guy. And believe it or not, we were sitting in the car at Sonic. Hey, you know what? You're, you're in college. I'm not going to, yeah, you know, I, Sonic's good a place as any for a date. So don't, don't be talking trash on the guy. And um, so she said, so we're sitting there, and my date is eating some tater tots. And she said, I remember that commercial we saw in class. And so he started to put the tot up in his mouth, and I went, rejected! Don't you bring that weak tot action. And um, I said, oh, well, so how did he respond? And she said, well, I discovered that he had not seen the commercial as I had assumed. So you can imagine he kind of looked at me like I was a little bit psycho. And um, I said, oh, well, that didn't go very well. And I, so what happened after that? And, and M Cube said, well, I explained to him about the commercial and everything. We went and looked it up. We found it. And then he kind of thought it was funny. Okay. So all's well that ends well. So anyway, I ran into M Cube later in life. I don't know, a year or two after that. And I ran into her somewhere. And I just said, hey, I'm cubed, how you doing? I said, hey, uh, whatever, whatever happened uh, with, with the tater tot guy and everything? And she says, we're engaged. Wow. I said, wow, so he didn't think you were that crazy after the tater tot episode that he, and you're engaged, that's really great, congratulations. And then I said, okay, I'm cubed, now tell me something. Um, please tell me that your married name is going to be something like Megan Margaret McCrary Miller. And I can call you M to the fourth. What do you think? Would that be cool? She goes, well, yeah, I guess that would be true. But um, anyway, uh, my name's going to be Megan Margaret McCrary Stovall. And I said, oh, man, really? Well, okay, I guess you're happy. So I'll, I guess we'll live with it. We'll call you M cubed S, but wouldn't that have been cool? I mean, why don't you hang out for a guy whose last name starts with M and then you can be M to the fourth. But anyway, I'm happy to report to you that I still keep in touch with, with her and um, M cubed S and uh, she, she's doing fine. And uh, so again, every time I see the tater tot reject the null hypothesis rejection, don't you bring that weak tot action. I always think about M cubed, S. So, hope you're doing well, Megan. Take care.